My heads up traders, in the session ahead, we do get the US CPI print coming out at half past 10 Eastern Standard Time or half past one UK time. Now, of course, the CPI number is one of the most marquee event risks that we have on the data calendar each month, and therefore is a, an event that we do need to manage and understand the risks associated with that. Now, of course, the Federal Reserve do set policy to core PCE or personal consumption expenditures, and that number comes out on the 26th of April. But it's the CPI number which is typically the more volatile affair. And that's because we can take elements from the CPI CPI basket and also from the producer price inflation basket, which comes out tomorrow. And we can model them together to understand how the PCE number's tracking, and it does a pretty good job of predicting how that's going to go. So the CPI number does really raise expectations, or set expectations around that PCE number, and that's why we do get the volatility around that. Now, when we're looking at key marquee event risks like this, and we're trying to understand the potential for movement and how that may affect our stops and our positions, I think there's three main areas that we can look at. The first one are market expectations, secondly, positioning, and then also liquidity as well. And what we can do is we can break down those expectations into three subcategories. We can look at implied movement through the options market, and that gives us an understanding of how, how people are feeling about the propensity for movement up or down. We can also have a look at what's expected from analysts and also from nowcast models, which the Cleveland Fed run, for example. And of course, then we can have a look at market pricing or what are swaps or interest rate futures saying about uh, Fed policy and where that could go further down the line. And all those factors can also sort of correlate to, to, to big moves playing through across asset class. Now, in terms of expectations for the CPI I will say if we have a look at it on a month on month basis, which is the sort of playbook that I'm looking at, we can see that expectations from analysts on a median projection is that they're expecting headline to grow at 0.3 of a percent and also the core number to come out at 0.3 of a percent. Of course, we can go into goods and services and core numbers and various factors as well. But from a very simplistic playbook, the market is looking at 0.3 of a percent for both headline and core. And that gives you a run rate on headline year on year at 3.4 and 3.7% year on year for the core number as well, which is a little bit of a moderation from where we were uh, in the February number of 3.8%. Now, in terms of the playbook that I'm looking at in terms of sort of expectations, I'm using the month for month basis to go from that situation. I think anything below 0.3 of a percent on the core number, we should see some relief coming through in risk assets. Momentum equities will do reasonably well. Growth equities are similar. We should see a little bit of downside in the US dollar and gold prices should have a bit of a rally, maybe Bitcoin as well in that situation. Where we get more relief playing through in markets is if we were to see a core, P, a core CPI number coming through below 0.25 of 1%. Conversely, on the other side of that situation on the playbook, I think if we were to see a core a CPI number above 0.35 of 1%, uh, I think we'd probably get a slight risk off picture. You're going to see front end bond yields move up higher. You're going to see rate cut expectations coming out of the market. You're going to see the US dollar have a rally. Dollar yen will probably push through 152. High beta effect prices will come under pressure. And of course, in that situation, you're likely to see growth equities such as NASDAQ and NVIDIA and those kind of companies coming under a little bit of pressure and probably some downside in the gold price as well because of the dollar strength and the move that we're likely to see in the bond market as well. I think above 0.4 of a percent, and that would cause a, a big gyration through financial markets because that would then for lead the year-on-year -year clip to be flat from where it was, or if not slightly higher in that situation. So the big extreme moves in markets, I think, comes from a Core, P, uh, core CPI number below 0.25 of 1% or above 0.4 of 1%. Now, if we break that down also into market expectations that we can see in the US swaps market, that they're pricing a rate cut in the June meeting at around 60%. We can see that by December, there's about 66 basis points of cuts currently priced in, which gives you about 2.7 cuts implied by the end of the year. And I think really also importantly, if we have a look at terminal rates, this is where the market's saying if the Fed were to cut further down the line, we could get to a point where the Fed funds rate could get to about 3.76%. That's the kind of terminal or trough rate that the market's looking at at the moment. Of course, if we have a look at those playbooks, if we were to see above 0.4%, you know, the idea that we're going to see a June rate cut coming through will obviously be radically repriced. The idea that we're going to see 66 basis points of cuts will obviously come out. We'd, we'd see something like two cuts being priced. And again, that sort of feeds into the idea that risk assets wouldn't like that situation. Conversely, obviously, if we were to see 0.25 of 1% or below, uh, the idea that we could see a June cut would come fully into fruition. And we'd like to see something like 70, 75 basis points of cuts being priced by the end of the year. That gives you about three rate cuts playing through. Now, if we have a look at positioning in the market at the moment, uh, the sort of leverage community is running 
you know, small US dollar short positions. It's not particularly punchy, but they're definitely a, a, a short position that's been accrued uh, by leveraged accounts and also by real money accounts. Uh, our clients at the moment are slightly long of US dollars, but again, that's not a particularly extended position. We've seen gold longs moving up. If you have a look at the CFTC report and have a look at managed money, uh, you can see that gold longs are now running at the highest level since March 2022, which means the market is a little bit long of gold, uh, but it's certainly not at extremes that we saw uh, a couple of years ago by any means at all. Um, if we if we were to look at the rates market and also in fixed income, we know that the market is, is certainly short of duration. Again, that plays through. Now, of course, in the form guide, we have seen the last three CPI run uh, prints coming hotter than expected. And again, that may lead to the idea that we could see uh, above expectations uh, print coming through. And the idea as well, if you have a look at the options market, have a look at implied volatility in G10 FX. And also for gold, people are expecting big movement to play through on the floors, certainly in the gold market where we're seeing overnight implied volatility volatility and gold running at the highest level of the year. Certainly people are expecting big movement. Where are the risks playing through? That's for you to decide, but the market is expecting this to be quite a punchy and important number. So put this on the radar.